to announce that the Justice Department will proceed with a federal civil rights investigation into Mr. Garner's death. This afternoon, I spoke with the widow of Eric Garner to inform her and her family of our decision to investigate potential federal civil rights violations. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that was uh, Eric Holder. And uh, joining us now is Paul Sperry, conservative pundit, investigative journalist. Uh, you read him uh, all the time, Investor's Business Daily, and on weekends in uh, the New York Post. He's the author of The Great American Bank Robbery, the unauthorized report about what really caused the Great Recession. And uh, he's written a great one uh, in the New York Post. Uh, Eric Holder believes all cops are racist, targets unconscious uh, conscious bias. Uh, Hello, Paul. Good to talk to you. Good to talk to you, Steve. All right. Uh, you know, I, 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 Eric Holder, none of this is a surprise to anybody who's followed him, you know, in the Reno Justice Department and what he did with the FALN terrorists, the whole thing. I mean, I think he has a, a, a humongous chip on his shoulder and uh, a questionable, you know, belief system. But it, it, it coincides with Obama's uh, questionable belief system. And they're exploiting this. Uh, these these uh, incidents in Ferguson and New York, and I, it's giving them exactly the cover they want. Yeah, they're using them uh, as uh, pretext. And, you know, they're saying that this is systemic bias on the part of law enforcement. And when they talk about reforming law enforcement, they're talking about putting cops through something called debiasing training. Now, this is where psychologists try to erase cops' subconscious minds of any preconceived notions about blacks and crime, basically uh, forcing police to, to ignore uh, Holder's own department statistical evidence showing strong links between African Americans and crime, especially young black men. Uh, now, the problem is here, besides this being Orwellian, uh, basically federal thought police getting the heads of, of uh, patrolmen and women across the country, the problem is it's very dangerous uh, because where this policy has been federally mandated in cities, debiasing has led to depolicing yep. in high high crime areas. Uh, in fact, Seattle's right now they're suffering from a crime wave right now after they went through uh, this training uh, from Holder, and the cops are actually suing Holder. But cops there are so afraid of being accused of racism, they're actually underreacting to crimes. And people living in the downtown area of Seattle are complaining to the mayor. Uh, that the cops aren't protecting them from criminals anymore, but this is all. This all stems from fed the federal investigation that Holder launched. So this might be coming to a city uh, soon, in your to your city soon or your town, unfortunately. A absolutely. It, it, I mean, it's it just common sense. I mean, if the cops are going to be put under that kind of a microscope where they can't do their job as they're supposed to do their job, uh, then they're not going to do their job. And you know, it's it, it just goes without saying. Have you ever heard a mayor? speak the way de Blasio spoke uh, about his own police force, that he's afraid they're going to kill his son, uh, and, 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 and it's been that way for decades in this city? I mean, my God. Well, this is actually, if he's not careful, uh, he's going to lose all the gains that they, they made under Giuliani and Bloomberg in terms of, uh, of driving out the violent crime in that city uh, with this nonsense. And... Uh, Unfortunately, New York is, is next uh, in the investigation. So Holder's already launched over 20 investigations. He's announced he's going to investigate civil rights investigation. He's opening up in the NY, against the NYPD. So they're going to be next for this ridiculous training. Uh, and I, I fear this is a train that's going to be hard to stop because, um, you know, like I said, they've already opened 20 investigations. They're planning more. And they've got a lot of leverage over cities. Uh, even with one, money, yeah, with money. Yeah, yeah I mean, they're going to have no problem over de Blasio because he's on their same same page. But uh, they don't want to lose their federal funding, and, and cops don't want to be punished. So they're going to comply with the new training regimes and the protocols. Uh, you know, um, don't stop, don't frisk, don't search, don't arrest, and don't even question suspects of color if you know what's good for right, you. Right, back off, let them go. Right. Let, let him go. That, that, that's a solution for uh, absolutely nothing. And, and y you're right. I mean, uh, it, it's going to happen here in New York. New York's going to lose everything. And they, you know, they went from, from over 2,000, we here in New York went from over 2,000 murders under David Dinkins a year to down well under 500 by the time Bloomberg left. And I don't know how many, but maybe 90% of those, those deaths every year are minorities. So look at all the minority lives that have been saved. Oh, yeah. It, it, on the federal side, 
Holder's own statistics show 91% of the victims uh, of, of murder, the black victims are, are uh, victims of black murderers. And I think this, I'm not sure about the victim side, but uh, in New York, uh, I believe it's about 75% of the murders in New York are uh, committed by African Americans. Uh, so there's a real statistical, strong statistical link there that you, you can't ignore. But they're, they're basically what they're doing is they're forcing cops now. To, they're, they're handcuffing them. They're blindfolding the good guys. Right. They're, handing, they're handing the bad guys uh, excuses for continuing their criminal Absolutely. activity. And they're, the only people they're going to end up hurting, well, not the only, but the main people they're going to end up uh, hurting. Uh, the law-abiding citizens. Pull them up the against a heartbreak. i got to go. I appreciate a Paul Sperry. Thank you, sir. Kentucky Congressman Thomas Massey is next.